No score. Edgar Renteria fouling the ball off to right field. Manny Ramirez, the much maligned for his defense right fielder, goes and makes a great catch by the bullpen wall. Leading off the top of the second, Matt Williams scorches one to third off the glove of the much maligned Bobby Bonilla. They, it is ruled a single. Bonilla looks as if he could have had it, but it was scored a hit. That brought Jim Tomey to the plate, hitting 220 in the postseason, but Kevin Brown walks him. Then, following a Sandy Alomar fly ball, Brown walks Marquis Grissom to load the bases. That brings up Chad O.J. Brown gets ahead of him on a foul ball, then 0-2 on another foul ball. Ball one away, ball two, low it in. O.J. then fouls off the 2-2 pitch. Brown dealing again. This time, O.J. fouls the ball, and it comes up and hits him right in the cheekbone. The next pitch from Brown, O.J. hits it right off the cheekbone of right field. Williams and Tome come around to score. It's 2-0 Tribe. Kevin Seitzer gets the ball for O.J. It is his first major league hit, and what a time to get it. Bottom of the second, still 2-0 Tribe. Jeff Conine blasts one to center field. Marquise Grissom makes the great basket catch at the wall. Chad O.J. says, whoa! It was 43 years ago that Willie Mays robbed the 111-win Indians to turn around a World Series. Not exactly Mays, but close. Omar Vizquel shot down the right field line, takes a big hop over Jeff Conine in the top of the third. Vizquel with a leadoff double. The next hitter at the plate, Manny Ramirez, and Vizquel gets his sixth postseason steal. Next pitch, Ramirez skies it to deep center field. This one is easily playable by Devo, but Vizquel tags and scores, and it's 3-0 try. Bottom of the fourth, O.J. gets some more help from his defense. Watch Conine rip the sinking liner to left. Dave Justice, the sliding catch. Leading off the top of the fifth, O.J. back at the plate. Doubles down the right field line. He's the first pitcher with two hits and two RBI in a World Series game since Mickey Lola, chin 68. He comes back again. O.J. would get to third on a Bip Roberts single. That sets up first and third for Manny Ramirez. Ramirez, another sacrifice fly to center. Chad O.J. will come across the plate, and the Indians will lead 4-0. Running the bases. Just flat wore O.J. out. He said he was gassed. Takes the shower right there. Leaves after five innings with a four to one lead. Charlie Nagy, maybe the seven game starter. Maybe not as he's warming up in the bullpen. Mike Jackson in bottom of the sixth. Second and third with two out. Charles Johnson hits the hard ground ball and Omar Vizquel makes the play of the series. Ending the threat. The Cleveland bench on its feet. Let's watch it again. He threw all five of his gold gloves at that one then picks it up to make the strong throw. Here it is one more time. Vizquel, the key to his game is usually the quick feet and quick hands, not the strong throw, but he makes it there. Bottom of the seventh, Marlins have first and second with nobody out. Mike Jackson gets Devon White looking. Devo didn't like the delayed call from Ken Kaiser, but one out. Next hitter, Jackson blows Edgar Renteria away. Strike three, two down. The next hitter, Gary Sheffield, with two on and two out now. Walks to load the bases. Indian pitching coach Mark Wiley out to talk to Jackson. But the right-handed setup man would stay in facing Bobby Bow with the bases loaded and two out. Bobby Bonilla swings at the first pitch. Flying to shallow center to end the inning. Jackson dodging the big bullet. Hargrove's Indians go to the ninth up four to one. In the ninth, Devon White at third after a triple. Two down. Jose Mesa gets Gary Sheffield to ground to another gold glover, Matt Williams, to end the game. The Marlins 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position. The Indians play a nearly flawless game to force game seven. Jared Wright pitching to Edgar Renteria with one out. The liner, it stays fair. Renteria hustles to second for the one out double. Darren Dalton, the next batter, after Gary Sheffield walked. Wright trying to settle down. Dutch, the grounder to Tony Fernandez, flipped to Omar Vizquel. Sheffield is called out for interference, so Joe West makes the tough call, a call that is rarely made, but a correct call. Al Leiter facing Marquise Grissom in the third after Jim Tomei walked. Base knock, and the Indians are in business. Tomei goes to second. Wright came around to bat. Chad O.J., two hits in game six, cheering him on. With two strikes, Wright gets the bunt down. Dalton has trouble. And his only play is to first, so one out. Bip Roberts had the flu, so his replacement, Tony Fernandez, came to the plate. Base knock. Tomei scores. Grissom scores. 
And the Indians stake to a 2 0 lead, and Al Leiter had his pitches up in the first couple of innings and paid the price. Bip says, way to go, replacement. 2 0 tribe. Jim Leland concerned a little bit. The Indians, a man aboard in the fourth, told me the little blooper, Gary Sheffield, an underestimated fielder. And he shows that the great sliding grab. Wright would settle down after facing a rough beginning. Getting a loo in the fourth. Strikes him out looking. Bobby Bonilla, next batter with two outs. A whiff. And then shows a little frustration. Two nothing after four. Wright had four Ks. Bottom six, right facing Dutch Dalton. And he nearly took Dutch's noggin off with that one. On the next pitch, Dalton trying for a little retribution. The liner passed Ramirez all the way to the wall. A three base error on Ramirez. And the Marlins trying to break the seal on their scoring drought. Next batter is Moise Alou. Probably been the most valuable player hitting wise for the Marlins, but not here. The pop to short center, the third out of the inning. Tribe still stake to a 2 0 lead after six. Bottom of the seventh, it's now 2 1. Bobby Bonilla has just left the yard in a hurry. After a walk to Craig Council, Wright would leave the game and turn the reins over to Paul Ossenmacher. Facing Devon White, Ossenmacher will go to his out pitch, the breaking ball, which is one of the best in the game. 2-1 through 7. Top 9 now, first and third for the Indians. Marquise Grissom, the grounder. Alomar nailed at the plate on Renteria's throw. We head to the bottom of the ninth, 2-1. Hargrove goes with his closer, Jose Mesa. Alou, the first batter. Got just enough of it. The flare sneaks in for the base knock. Benilla goes down on strikes, one down. Right, watching and hoping. Charles Johnson at the plate. The other way, great piece of hitting. Alou goes to third. And he's in safely. That brings counsel to the plate. All they need is a sack fly to send this game into extra innings. Council on a tough pitch from Mesa does exactly that. Goes down and gets it. We're tied at two. And the former minor leaguer with the Colorado Rockies is pumped. Jim Eisenreich a chance to be the hero. We would go to extra innings as he grounds to Tony Fernandez. Top ten. Rob Nen on facing Vizquel. Nen has been roughed up. He was not roughed up on Sunday. Strikes him out. After Fernandez base hit, Nen strikes out Ramirez. Justice wants a piece and gets nothing. Three outs. As the Marlins try to break through and win one for Jim Leland. Bottom of the 11th, Charles Nagy in. Mike Hargrove had to choose between Wright and Nagy as his game seven starter. Badia goes down for the base hit and gets it. Greg Zana pops it up, Nagy. To first, Benia is safe. One out. It's Craig Council again. The little grounder, Benia shields Fernandez just for a split second. Fernandez looking up. Benia chugs to third. 11 years and one day after Bill Buckner's costly error in the World Series between the Mets and Red Sox, Tony Fernandez, a former Gold Glove winner, has one that will be talked about for quite some time. After an intentional walk loaded the bases for Devon White, the grounder, Fernandez goes home, gets Benilla two outs. Edgar Renteria had a big base hit that won a game in the opening series against the Giants. The winning run is 90 feet away. Craig Council, Renteria, back through the middle. The Marlins win. And Edgar Renteria, an improbable hero in an improbable season. Jim Leland and Bobby Bonilla finally get to hug in their final game of the season. The 27th time Florida has won a game in its final at-bat, so it seems. Boy, what a series coming down to the 11th inning of game number seven. What emotions were you experiencing as you watched this ball game? Well, it was a great game. It was a great game by both teams. I think everybody had been waiting for this one, and they got it tonight, and I, this should be a you know, all of a sudden, this series, to me, becomes fantastic because of the way this game was tonight. So, you know, we had a couple bad ball games in this series. You know, the weather had a little something to do with it. We didn't play real good in one or two. Maybe they didn't play good in one. But now I think everybody is happy. Everybody's satisfied. And um, 
I, I, I know I'm happy. Jim, when you look at some of the decisions that you made in this series that obviously people second-guess decisions, you left Hernandez in the game in game five through all that rough stuff. You uh, let Bonilla stay in the game, but you pinch ran for Charles Johnson in this game. Which of those decisions are you most proud of? Well, I'm really not proud of any of my decisions. I, you know, what the situation of the game dictates what you can and can't do, and I just tried to manage the same way I always did. Tonight was one of the toughest games I ever had to manage because, you know, we were a little short of pitching. We had to make a lot of moves. I only had one player left, but um, I had to make the moves. This was, you don't get many chances to get here, and I had to take every chance I could to win it, and we did. You know, Nen and Powell hadn't been going very well. You had the confidence in those guys. How much of the confidence did you have in them? Well, you know, I've always had confidence in them all year, and I think the other mystique about this whole thing is a lot of times the media and the fans think you got some sleeper down there that nobody knows anything about. You got what you got, and that's what I've used all year, and that's what I use in this series. Now, Wayne Heisinger may, in fact, sell this club. You have an escape clause. Absolutely. Are you considering the possibility of leaving if he sells? Well, what I did is I had the escape clause put in just in case. I don't, I'm not considering anything any more than anybody else in this organization right now. Nobody knows what's going on right now. There's going to be chaos here for the next two or three weeks. And as soon as we find out something, I think that'll ease everybody's mind. So I'm not talking about going anywhere. Uh, if I manage next year, I'm going to manage the Florida Marlins. So I think that, you know, Dave Dombrowski doesn't know what's going on. Wayne really not sure what's going on. Don Smiley, nobody right now knows what's going on. So uh, I'm just going to wait like everybody else and see what happens. Well, it sounds like the White Sox, the Orioles, and anyone else should take you off their list. Yeah, I can guarantee you one thing. If I manage a Major League Baseball team next year, it will be the Florida Marlins. All right, Jim Leland running around the field with the flag. A very emotional moment for him and the Marlins as he leads them to the championship in his first year here in South Florida. Now back up to the studio. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much. On the other side of the ledger, Mike Hargrove didn't get the job done in 1995, failed again in 1997. And as strange as this game is, it seems so difficult to believe the guy did nothing wrong, and yet his team loses after the game he talked with Harold Reynolds. All right, thanks, Mike. Mike, man, that was, <laughs> have you ever been involved in a game as exciting as that ball game right there? Harold, I'm going to tell you, from the, from the middle of my back up to my neck is just solid knots right now, just from... Uh, the uh, the suspense and the tension that was in that game. Uh, um, we've been, you know, we really for the last month we've been involved in games like that. Almost seems seems like uh, quite often, but uh, uh, we've been able to pull them out tonight. We just couldn't do it. What was the first thing you said to your ball club after the game tonight? I told them to feel good about themselves. They were champions. They're winners. There's uh, there's not a loser on this club. Uh, these guys have have uh, battled uh, pretty long odds to get here. A lot of people uh, around the country uh, wrote us off uh, back in June. Um, and the guy, if I had a nickel for every time I heard it, we played in a weak division. I could have, I could have retired by now. And, and uh, somehow these guys found a way to win the, our division. Uh, they, they started coming together, and, and, and our pitching got healthy, and, and, uh, and things started clicking for us. And they played good baseball, and, and, and we, uh, we got to the World Series where we should have been. I, I think I'm very proud of these guys, and I told them that there's no reason to hold your, you know, hang your heads, that uh, feel good about each other and, and, and themselves, and, and, uh, and let's come back at it hot and heavy next year. I thought you, you managed a brilliant game tonight. What do you, you what do you take away from this World Series as a manager and apply to your ball club? I'll, I'll tell you what, Harold. I, I think that that, uh, that for whatever reason in the, in the first World Series I was in in '95, I think people uh, uh, got the idea that I wasn't on top of my game, and that really bothers me. It bothered me then. It still bothers me because I feel like I do a decent job as a manager. And I think that, that the one thing that this World Series has done for me personally is has maybe. Uh, maybe in the minds of some other people uh, uh, shown that I am, I am a good manager. I hope so. Um, what does it do to help me with this ball club? It, uh, I've learned lessons this year. I think, he, you know, the old saying, when you step out on the field, if you don't learn something every day, you, you, you haven't been, you're not worth your salt. I think that, that uh, I've learned that uh, players, uh, players' egos are less fragile than I, than I once thought. Um, and, uh, and, and guys, at least the guys on this ball club, can take a, they, they can take a little bit more pounding than, than, uh, than uh, maybe some of the players I've had in the past. All right, Mike, thank you for the time. Thank I appreciate Gerald. that. Back to you. And